If you've been uh, following these video blogs or whatever they are, uh, you know that up until last week I was traveling in the United States, uh, went to San Diego. I'm trying to reestablish that market. Um, if you have any curiosity about doing a class, let me know. Uh, I'll get my schedule posted fairly soon. I'm gonna, I'll be back there in the spring. But uh, I was flying from somewhere to somewhere. I think it was from Hartford, Connecticut to Baltimore, I think, to go on to Pittsburgh. But the seat next to me was empty. The, I was, the middle seat was empty, and there was a book sitting in there, and it said Natural Cures for Psychological Problems, I think. And the young lady that uh, picked up the book was gorgeous. She was a beautiful gal. And uh, I said, uh, is this, are you doing this? And she said, no, I'm just about to graduate as an MD and I'm researching some other things. And we got talking and I said, wow, I said, medical school. I said, uh, scholarship, uh, wealthy family. She said, no, I'm incredibly in debt. And I thought, wow, wow, here she is getting her medical degree, uh, incredibly in debt, and already looking for natural cures for problems, right? Which I don't think she will find in the medical profession. And I don't think, and I think that if her views, which I can't imagine this, are skewed somewhat because she owes hundreds of thousands of dollars and she has to start making money, and that means selling drugs or wielding a knife, uh, I'm going to bet on that. But I just got thinking of, shit, how fortunate I have been. I went through college. I went through chiropractic. I got out of chiropractic college over 30 years ago, so it's been a while. I got out of a chiropractic when kinesiology was just being innovated, just coming into the profession, started learning it from the innovator, George Goodhart, and uh, went into an associateship with a man named John Bandy who taught me a, a lot more about kinesiology, and kinesiology was frowned upon by the chiropractic profession. In fact, they tried to get it out of the chiropractic profession. I'm not sure why, but within a Within a profession of quacks, I was considered a quack. <laughs> and imagine that little tiny minuscule area of the world. Not only are you a quack by degree, you're a quack within the quack profession. But, and, but now it's been kind of accepted. And chiropractic has been transitional. A lot of us had to step up as, as frontline uh, primary health care providers to deal with a lot of things that people didn't want to take drugs for. And I still, uh, I had a gentleman, I have a small practice uh, came in today and he said, his, the doctor, the medical doctor did a thing. I told him about my hip and he said, well, you're going to have to take painkillers. And he said, I don't want to take painkillers. He said, they mess with my head. I don't like what they do to me. Can you fix me? Then so we're working with them. We can't fix them in a visit. I know this is, you know, how many chiropractors does it take to change a light bulb? One, but it takes 24 visits. It's going to take me a few times to finish this man. Then I'm going to say, why don't you come in once a month and get adjusted? And I think he'll do it because people here in the mountains know value. But I, it started out, this young lady, medical degree, hundreds of thousands of dollars looking for natural cures. And she said there are no courses for this in medical school. I'm glad I'm a chiropractor. I'm glad I raised my kids naturally.